Hello, dear friends. Welcome back. My name is August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads, and this is a massive book haul. I am so excited to share these with you. These are books that I have accumulated since basically September until now. Majority of these are thrifted, and I they're all so cool. I cannot wait to tell you about them. I am just so happy. Like these books are such a huge reflection of my reading taste and my style and I just cannot wait to get my grubby claws on them and to eat them and devour them. They are all just such autumnal and winter vibes and <laughs> I'm just so excited. Like look at some of them are just so yellow and brown and like oh I'm just so excited. It has been so long since I've shared a book haul with you all and I have just very warmly welcomed these into my life. So let's go ahead and get started. So these are all in chronological order of when I purchased them and got them. Uh, some of them might be a little familiar to you, such as this first one, which is Ahab's Return or The Last Voyage by Jeffrey Ford. I did show this one off in my last vlog because it is a part of my November TBR. I'm hoping to get to it soon. This cover, hands down, is one of my favorite covers so far this year in 2021 that I've seen. It is beyond stunning and that's absolutely what intrigued me about this. So I found this book at Dollar Tree and honestly Dollar Tree has never really disappointed me in terms of the quality of books that I've gotten there. Like they've all just been really wonderful. So if you have a Dollar Tree, I highly recommend. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know I'm a huge Dollar Tree fan and I plug it in every single chance I get because one, I'm a cheapskate, we know this, and two, the books are actually great. Some of my favorite books of all time are from Dollar Tree, so definitely do not discount them. This is a story about Ahab, Captain Ahab, which is from Moby Dick, which I will say I have never read before. So I'm curious to see my limited knowledge of Moby Dick. How does it affect my reading experience of this book? But basically, this is a beautiful magical realism literary fiction retelling where Captain Ahab returns to the mainland to discover that he is a dead man, a walking ghost whose tragic demise was detailed in a notorious fiction called Moby Dick. So he comes back to life um, from the bottom of the ocean and he's a ghost and basically he goes, it kind of talks about his untimely death, what really happened, so it's a retelling. So there's like an investigation that happens um, to figure out what happened to Captain Ahab and his life before that. Their investigation takes unexpected, dangerous, and ultimately tragic turns and leads Ahab and someone else, I'm not sure who, it's probably up here, on a wondrous odyssey from the docks of Lower Manhattan to the treacherous Five Points and subterranean opium dens to the free black settlement of Seneca Village and the magnificent New York Crystal Palace and to the Indian Caves and the wilds of Northern Manhattan. So it's described as being eerily magical and beautiful and weird and that's 100% my style. I love books that are really dark and moody and I love themes of the ocean and the sea and like I'm so excited to read this. So definitely stay tuned and subscribe if you're interested because I do have weekly reading vlogs where I talk way more in depth about my reads so I'm just really excited for this one. Next we have a book that my sister actually found for me in a little free library and I'm just so grateful for her that she saw this and thought of me and that is Galatea 2.2 by Richard Powers. I love this cover. I actually think this might be one of my other favorite book covers of this year. I, honestly there are so many gorgeous book covers in here. I shouldn't say that any of them are my favorite. There's Winston. This book sounds very intellectual, very strange and bizarre, again very up my alley and I'm so excited to read it. I feel like it's gonna take me a while to get to it though because of how intellectual and dense and bizarre it is. This is a kind of auto fiction. The main character is named Richard Powers, such as the author's name, and he has written four novels, kind of working on a new project which is to train a neural net. I don't even understand what any of this means on a canonical list of great books into the, into a machine that becomes capable of passing a comprehensive exam in English literature. So basically he's teaching this computer superpower machine to understand literature. All of the greatest literatures are plugged into it and then I think it kind of creates the next biggest piece of classical literature. I could be super wrong but when I was reading reviews of this as well they were saying that like you feel stupid while reading it basically. Richard Powers definitely comes across um, from the reviews as being very intellectual and kind of not really cluing you in 
to what is actually happening, um, which could either infuriate me or I could really, really love it. I love things that are so completely above my head that I don't understand and it really makes me question and think. So I feel like this is a really interesting book. Uh, such an interesting concept as well that it follows. Very smart person already, but then who is getting sucked into this rabbit hole of computers versus classic literature. So that is Galatea 2.2. Next is a book I found while thrifting at Goodwill and that is this beautiful cover, Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rees. I think that's how you pronounce it. This artwork is so so stunning. I had never heard of this. I'm not sure how famous it is but basically it, it brings to light one of fiction's most mysterious characters the mad woman in the attic from Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre, which is so interesting because similar to Captain Ahab, it is referencing a classic piece of literature that I have never read. I really, really need to read Jane Eyre. I have a copy, I just need to read it. So hopefully this winter, I would love to read Jane Eyre first and then this so I can understand the classical references. But this is set in the Caribbean. Its heroine is Antoinette Cosway, a sensual and protected young woman who is sold into marriage to the prideful Rochester. This author portrays a society so driven by hatred, so skewed in its sexual relations that it can literally drive a woman out of her mind. Love the themes of this. Love that it's another retelling of a character in another piece of classical literature. These first three books all reference kind of classical literature, which I love and I definitely want to get more into. This sounds like a feminist take. Uh, it's very short, very slim, and I am just so excited. This is, again, something I really, really love to read. Oh my gosh, I'm just so, honestly, I'm just geeking out over all these books. They're so cool. Okay, there's that one. Next is another book I referenced in my last vlog. So again, I'll link that down below, but it's the Dark Hills Divide series, part one by Patrick Carmen, The Land of Elyon Books. Um, so this is a book that I have seen around forever since I was a young little child and I've always wanted to read it and I don't think I ever have. I have no memory of reading it but this cover brings me back so much and it follows a 12 year old girl who is spending a summer in Bridewell with her father. She looks forward to exploring the old lodge where she stays each year with its cozy library and maze of passages and rooms. She's also eager to finally solve the mystery of what lies beyond the immense walls that were built to keep out an unnamed evil that lurks in the forest and the dark hills, an evil the townspeople are still afraid of. So excited for this. This is definitely YA or maybe even middle grade. I'm not quite sure. Beautiful deckled edges. It has a map and I'm so excited. This is also on my November TBR and I really want to get to it. I think this might be one of the next books I read and I feel like I'm going to fly through it. It is so... Oh, I'm just so excited. So yeah, found this in a little free library. It was such a good find and hopefully I can find the next books in the series. I don't even know how many books are in this, but I would love to find them used and add them to my collection as well. Next we have another YA book that I found at Dollar Tree. Um, I will explain. I'm not a fan of the cover. Do not judge. We're not judging here. And that is The One Memory of Flora Banks by Emily Barr. What intrigued me about this book is that it takes place in Norway, the Arctic, and it follows memory loss. Those are two things I absolutely love. Or three things, basically. Love snowy atmospheres. This definitely sounds like a wonderful winter book to read. I love stories about memory loss or trying to regain memory, flashbacks, dreams, that sort of thing. Anything psychological, absolutely love. Um, and then, of course, we have Norway, which I just love books that are set or written from Scandinavian countries, European countries, anything like that. Like I'm just a huge, huge sucker for it. So this follows a 17 year old girl who has no short term memory and her mind resets several times a day. She kind of falls in love with somebody. So this might be a little bit of a hokey romance, but I'm up for it. Um, it sounds like it might be kind of fun to read around the holiday season. I don't know, that's just how I'm feeling. Um, so she is convinced that once she starts up this relationship with this boy, that he is able to restore her memory. All of a sudden things are starting to flood back to her. So they go together to Norway to piece together shards of her fractured mind. But from the moment she arrives in the Arctic, nothing is quite as it seems. I'm so excited. This just sounds like so much fun. It seems like it would be really easy to read, uh, very plot driven, but I'm hoping to find elements in here that I absolutely love and can just really entertain me. I'm really looking forward to this one. Next we have a book that I found at Goodwill. Oh my gosh, this is another book that I've definitely seen around before but I've never read and that is The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane by Kate D. Camilo. Love this cover. 
love this format of this book this square format beautiful illustrations so this is a piece of like middle grade or YA I just oh, I love this illustration so much I love reading oh my gosh I just found a bookmark in here I collect found bookmarks in thrift stores so I'm gonna go ahead and set this over here I just love reading YA and middle grade I think that more people should read it it's just so fun and entertaining. It just gives me the warm and cozies, you know? And I feel like this one, especially with its beautiful illustration style, look at that. I'm just gonna fall head over heels for this. Read it kind of quickly, but just really savor each second of it. And this cover and this, like the colors on it is just so autumnal and cozy. Love it. This follows a China rabbit named Edward Tulane. The rabbit was very pleased with himself. Uh, he was owned by a girl named Abilene who treated him with the utmost care and adored him completely. And then one day he was lost. I'm so excited. I've never read this before and I'm just really, really excited to get into it and see what it's all about. But I just feel like I'm really going to enjoy this beautiful piece of middle grade YA literature. Oh, here's a colored painting as well. Love. Next are some amazing books that my partner and I found together because we took a date day last month in October to a city that is about 45 minutes away called Kalamazoo. And we ended up going to three different bookstores. We went to a few brand new stores and some used places and they were all so magical. Like, I was so sad that at that time I wasn't filming anything because I wish I could have vlogged all of it, but I knew that if I had any footage, I wouldn't do anything with it. I was too busy to vlog, but I found some amazing books and I'm so excited. Basically from like here to here are books that I found at those Kalamazoo stores. So I'm just really, really excited to share these with you. This first one is again, one of my favorite covers of this year. And that is Hollow by B. Catling. Oh my gosh, how uncomfortable is this cover? I love it so much, so much. This is the kind of shit I'm into. This is just gorgeous and it sounds so trippy and psychedelic and bizarre and I love it. Basically, it's like this very dark, fantasy, magical realism. I honestly don't even know how to explain it. So I'm gonna read the back because even after reading the back, it still makes no sense, but I'm just so excited for it because I feel like it's just gonna feel like one giant fever dream. And that is 100% the type of literature I like to read. It's just like the most kooky fever dream shit ever. <laughs> so this reads, after the sudden death of the high church's sacred oracle, the world spirals deeper into bedlam. Evil forces envelop the countryside. The line between life and the afterlife begins to blur and a series of strange mysteries unfolds. A young monk has ecstatic visions and loses his ability to speak. An underground revolution is sparked in a small village with a woman called Dolgret at the helm, and Barry Follett, a mercenary, leads his gang of marauders across a treacherous terrain filled with giants and dangerous sirens to deliver the one thing that can restore order to the divine landscape. As reality bends, a series of brutal adventures illuminates the nature of fate, beauty, and doom alike. Rich with action and fantastic creatures, Hollow ushers the reader through a world where holy secrets are unearthed, Art mirrors life and death looms over everything. <laughs> my type of book, my cup of tea. <laughs> I'm so excited to read this. I am hoping, I'm gonna keep doing my TBR jar, but I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that this comes up soon and I can read it in like December to February area. Like that is my goal, <laughs> like I'm hoping. So that is hollow. Next is another book that was bought brand new. God, another wonderful cover. Look at this. This is called The Guest Cat by Takashi Harati. Oh my gosh. So this is like this. Oh, it's so dainty and cute and tiny. I feel like I need to hold it with pinkies out. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh my God. I'm like geeking out. I'm like hyperventilating. Okay. Whew, calm it. Calm down, honey. So this follows uh, Two writers, a young couple who enjoy their quiet life in a leafy part of Tokyo. They work at home as freelance editors. One day, a cat invites herself into their small kitchen. She is a beautiful creature. She leaves but comes again and then again and again. New small joys radiated by the fleeting loveliness of life accompany the cat. The days take on more light and color. 
that's just the tale and the story of this cat in this quaint tiny little cottage with two artists and writers and I'm just so excited. So this is translated by Eric Selland as well into English so I'm just so excited for this. This is so freaking cute. I, mm, I can't. Basically all these books I'm like I need to calm down over. Like they're all so amazing. I wish I had 19 different pairs of eyeballs and brains and I could read all of them at once but I'm also trying to like milk the experience out and like treasure it and just slow down and just loving books. I'm having a really strong book moment right now. I just want to hold all of them and cry a little bit. Yeah so that's the guest cat. Next is another book brought brand new. This one's so cool. Oh my god again a wonderful cover like where are these books coming from? I okay this is The Animals in That Country by Laura Jean McKay. Look at that and look at that beautiful shiny font as well. So this is like a science fiction meets the biological animal world, which I absolutely love that fusion so much. So it's basically about this very like grumpy grandma, which is basically who I aspire to be one day. I just want to be a cranky grandma who only loves animals. That's basically what she does. She only loves the animals on her farm. She hates people. <laughs> the only other person she really likes is her granddaughter. All of a sudden there is a pandemic that's sweeping the country and she realizes this grandma named Jean, Grandma Jean, realizes that this is no ordinary flu. Its chief symptom is that its victims begin to understand the language of animals. First mammals, then birds and insects too. As the flu progresses, the unstoppable voices become overwhelming and many people begin to lose their minds, including Jean's son. Then Grandma Jean takes a road trip basically. Um, with a dingo riding shotgun, they find themselves in a stark strange world in which the animal apocalypse has only further isolated people from other species. Oh my gosh, it sounds like it's going to be satirical, maybe a little cheeky and funny, but also just stunning and beautiful and weird. Like I absolutely love books about animals and flora and fauna, biology, psychology, anything like that. Like I just, this, all of this is my jam. So I'm really, really excited to read this one. Really looking forward to it. Also love the format. I just really love tall paperbacks for some reason. It's just, look at that, it's so much bigger than my head. Like yeah, everything about this is stunning. Again, cover art, 100%. Love it. Uh, the next few, basically from here until this little book, are all found used at this wonderful, whimsical little thrift store in Kalamazoo. They had this like main building that housed animals in that country, the book I just showed. So they had some like brand new releases, then they kept all of their used mystery, horror, literary fiction in that one. But then you go outside and almost in this like tiny little garden shed was this cozy, beautiful dusty musty room that was just filled with all of the used classic books. So after I had done some buying and purchasing I was like yeah I'll go check it out real quick and then ended up leaving with um a lot of classic books so I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Most of these I feel like you all will have heard of at least at one point but they're new to me in my life and I still have not read them and I'm just really really excited so Let's just go ahead and dive in. The first used book is Sexing the Cherry by Jeanette Winterson. Love this cover. Am I gonna say that about every book I, <laughs> I got? Love this cover. So Jeanette Winterson is a phenomenal author, 100% my style. I read her book Gut Symmetries earlier this year in June, I believe. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, her writing style is so up my alley with like poetic, bizarre, weird, very intentional love it. It is not a fly through kind of reading style at all. And while there is plot, the writing style itself really deters its own self from what the plot is. Like you have to focus so much on what each word is, what each sentence is and deconstruct it. But there's still a plot. So I'm so excited to read my second Jeanette Winterson book. There are so many other books of hers that I really, really want to read. But Sexing the Cherry is a dazzling novel of history, fable, and myth. Again, a lot of fables and myths are in this eclectic book haul, and I just absolutely love that. I love books that have like just an underlying theme, a fable, a myth. They just seem so bizarre. I love it. So it follows this person named Jordan and his mother, the dog woman. <laughs> I don't know what that means, who live in pestilent London during the reign of Charles II. When Jordan travels off to see the world, he learns that time is one, quote unquote, and every journey conceals another within. 
journeys bounded only by the limits of imagination. As the pieces of this narrative shimmer and coalesce like beads of mercury, brilliant and mutable, Jeanette Winterson once again demonstrates the scope of her singular vision. So even with that description, I have no idea what the frick this book is about, but I don't care. It's Jeanette Winterson. I'm just so excited to get more into her literature. And yeah, so I think this was published in the 1990s or 80s, 1989. Um, I'm just really excited for this one. Next is a classic. It's Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Love this cover. So stunning. I have an embarrassing story to share with you all. <laughs> When I was in high school, I really wanted to get into classic literature, so I picked up a copy of Wuthering Heights from my local, like, used bookstore, and it was stunning. It was the most gorgeous cover ever, hardcover, like a painted hardcover, like there was no dust jacket whatsoever, and I freaking donated it before I moved to university. And that, it was like a copy from the 70s or the 60s or something. It was so vintage and stunning, and I'm just, I kick myself all the time. So I decided to get in paperback because I do prefer paperbacks over hardcover any day of the week. Every day of the week. I like paperbacks so much more. It smells good. Yeah, Wuthering Heights. I have never read it. I know. <laughs> a lot of classics I have just never read, which is such a shame, but I'm hoping to get into them, especially like winter season. It's just like a time when I crave classics. I honestly don't even really know what it's about. I did start reading Wuthering Heights when I picked up my vintage copy and I think I got maybe like 50 or so pages in and I just felt like I was rereading the same line over and over again because I was just so confused but I think now that I'm a little bit older and I really embraced my love of reading I feel like it will be a little bit easier a little bit more accessible to me but we shall see. This follows the turbulent and tempestuous love story of Kathy and Heathcliff, spanning two generations from the time Heathcliff, a strange coarse young boy, is brought to live on the Earnshaw's windswept estate through Kathy's marriage to Edgar Linton and Heathcliff's plans for revenge to Kathy's death years later and the eventual union of the surviving Earnshaw and Linton heirs. So... Wuthering Heights. Next is another classic. We have Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. Ah, oh, so cute. So cute. I actually listened to Alice's Adventures in Wonderland as an audiobook and I really enjoyed it. I did not realize how bizarre that book is. I had no idea. Um, I never grew up watching the classic Disney animated Alice in Wonderland. I still really need to at some point in my life. I don't think I've ever done it. Um, so I was really surprised at how bizarre and kind of very psychedelic and trippy it is. But this one also includes Through the Looking Glass and some of the illustrations in here as well, which I love. This just sounds like such a fun book to like curl up and read like at night or just kind of, I don't know, it just seems so cozy to me. Again, just kind of classic children's literature. Oh my god. Oh wow. <laughs> Scary. Yeah. So I'm excited to officially own a copy of this in my hands and I can read it and just digest it with my eyeballs. Then we have a book that I found because Emma from Emmy Reads was, I believe this is one that she was like highly, highly recommending, but I could be so wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is. And that is Snow Country. Oh my gosh, look at this beautiful, beautiful cover. Love this copy so much by uh, Yasunari Kawabata. So I'm just really excited. I only recognized it because of Emma's videos. No Country is the story of a geisha, Kamako, who gives herself without illusions and with undismayed directness to a love affair foredoomed to transience. It describes the three visits of Shinomura to a hot spring in the west of Japan, the snowiest region in the world. Oh, just love reading books about snow when it's snowing out and... I'm really excited for this piece of literature. So, so excited. I also really enjoy the format of this one, the physical format. I love when books have extra large margins. I don't know why, it's just really nice. And this copy is so beautiful. The spine isn't even cracked. Such a great condition book for a used one. And I'm pretty sure the used books were very cheap. So just love finding pieces like this in used bookstores. It's just absolutely amazing. And I'm really excited for this one. Next, we have a book I've been wanting to read for so long, and that's Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Wow. 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 I was so confident for a second. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, love this cover. Again, so, so stunning. I've been wanting to read this for a very long time. Unfortunately, there is no 
beautiful description on the back that I can read aloud to you. And I have like almost no knowledge of this book other than the vibes of it sound amazing to me. I do believe it is a little bit of like a male-male romance, a lot of dark academia vibes, um, intellectual characters. I really couldn't tell you more than that and I'm very sad I can't tell you more but there's nothing on the back. No idea. I'm so sorry but just I'm excited. Maybe maybe after this video you can look it up on Goodreads and actually look up the plot and I should probably do the same because I came ill-prepared. Brideshead Revisited. <laughs> Next we have The Waves by Virginia Woolf. Oh my gosh this cover. This cover this beautiful battered well-loved copy is just stunning love the seashells love this illustration style so much and again this book does not have a description and i did not pick it up for the description i picked it up just because it's virginia wolf i have only read orlando by virginia wolf absolutely loved it loved it um and i currently have a copy of mrs dalloway on my shelves that i would love to read sometime soon but this is the waves i don't know a anything about it. Before seeing it, I didn't even know Virginia Woolf had a book called The Waves, so I know nothing again. But I don't care. I kind of want to go in blind. I just think Virginia Woolf's writing is so stunning. So that is The Waves. The last book in the I thrifted in a cute bookstore in Kalamazoo, The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. Of course, of course, you watched Emma's channel. She gushes about this book and I've just always wanted to know why. Um, I am so excited to read this, okay? This was used. This was $2, I believe. Um, not my favorite cover. It is more of like a mass market paperback, but it's, again, like almost never been read, I don't think. And I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to read this book. So excited to hopefully, hopefully understand the hype and the love and the atmosphere and the story. Oh my gosh, the beautiful architecture, the time period, the characters, honestly, anything about this book. I'm just so excited. I'm, this is another one of those books that I'm just really, really hoping that in December or January, I can pick up and read through my TBR jar challenge. So definitely stay tuned if I can make that happen. I am feeling so pulled to read this this season and this year. Like, I cannot express how pulled I am to read it. Um, I've been hoping and keeping my eyes out for a copy, a used copy specifically, of The Phantom of the Opera for several years, ever since I discovered Emma's channel on YouTube. So I've just been waiting patiently for a used copy, finally found it. And if this is the one we have, this is the one we have. Honestly, I really love the detail of this dress and the illustration on the cover. Um, so, Phantom of the Opera. These next five books actually came from the bargain section of my local grocery store. I don't know what happened, but my local grocery store's bargain section is freaking popping right now. Popping. I went nuts because a lot of these are books that I've had my eye on for a while, have had on my Goodreads want to read list, have seen before, or books that just pulled me in so much by their cover art. Just be prepared for like some of the most beautiful covers ever, um, like the rest of this video basically. And I, ooh, <laughs> so excited. The first book is Supper Club by Laura Williams. Shut up, I hate that this sticker left a remnant, but oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> ah! I want to eat this cover. I want to eat this book. I just ah! I have had this on my Goodreads want to read list for a while. I'm pretty positive I was drawn in by it because of the cover. This book sounds so fascinating. So it's about this woman named Roberta and she is almost in her 30s. She's in her late 20s and she spends much of her time trying not to take up space. Stuck in a mindless job and reluctant to pursue her passion for food, she suppresses her appetite and recedes to the corners of rooms. But then she meets Stevie, a spirited and effervescent artist, and their intense friendship sparks a change in Roberta, a shift in her desire for more. So together they invent this supper club, which is a transgressive and joyous collective of women who celebrate rather than admonish their hungers. They gather after dark and feast until they are sick. They break into private buildings and leave carnage in their wake. They embrace their changing bodies. They stop apologizing. For these women, the club is a way to explore, discover, and push the boundaries of the space they take up in the world and reclaim it. 
I am a huge sucker for food descriptions, books about food, cooking. Um, I've read a number of chef memoirs in my lifetime just because I love the descriptions of food so much. I cannot express it. Like it's just a certain type of literature that I just, oh my, oh, oh, oh. There's something about it. It works for me. So I feel like the this like feminist reclaiming dark late night supper clubs with this beautiful cover. I'm just going to lose my mind. I'm hoping it's a new favorite. I love the style of literary fiction where it sounds like a whole lot of almost nothing plot-wise really happens other than the growth of these characters and the study of these characters and the world around them and how they influence the world and how the world influences them. That is my jam. Love it. So excited for this book. <laughs> if you can't tell. <laughs> Next we have this beautiful book which is Follow Me to Ground by Sue Rainsford. Again, beautiful, stunning cover and artwork. I am just so in love with these books, friends. Like, so in love. There's something so special about inviting such beautiful books, like the writing and the artistry themselves, but then also these stunning covers. Like, it it just fills me up with so much joy. I know I'm talking a lot about it, but like, I really, really just cannot express the love I have for bringing such beautiful literature and covers and art, just straight up art in all forms into my life like how lucky are we <laughs> to have books mm. okay follow me to ground is this actually very short and slim beautiful hardcover book here that I found bargain section this is again very fable very myth-like a little bit of a dark fantasy slash magical realism speculative fiction maybe a little dystopian jam I don't know it just sounds great like a little concoction of all of them and just stir it up in a cauldron so it follows this woman named Ada and her father and they have the power to heal illness and they live on the edge of this village where they help sick locals or cures quote unquote as they're called by cracking open their damaged bodies or temporarily burying them in the reviving dangerous ground nearby. Ada and her father are more and less than human and uh, she herself Ada is not really interested in curing people and she meets a love interest named Samson. They strike up an affair. Her father is not happy about it and she basically is torn between her old way of life and new possibilities with her lover, which sounds very interesting. So will this be a little romantic, maybe a little smutty, or is it going to be something completely different? I have no idea. With this type of plot, it's so intriguing because there's so much world building I feel like that needs to happen, but I've read so many stories that are either like kind of myths or fables where the story and the world building collide so seamlessly that for such a slim book, it might just be more character driven. And either way, I'm just really, really excited for this one. So that is Follow Me to Ground. This next cover, friends, this next cover, Sin Eater by Megan Campisi. Oh my God. I, I know I've expressed, I have a thing with food and like these dark covers with these kind of illustrative victorian renaissance kind of oh mm, mm, oh my god mm. okay so this explains itself and <laughs> very boldly might i add compares itself to the handmaid's tale meets alice in wonderland in this inventive historical novel about a girl in 16th century england who is sentenced to be a sin eater and finds herself caught up in a deadly plot at the heart of the queen's court. For the crime of stealing bread, 14-year-old May receives a life sentence. She must become a sin eater, which is a shunned woman brutally marked whose fate is to hear the final confessions of the dying, eat ritual food symbolizing their sins as a funeral rite, and thereby shoulder their transgressions to grant their souls access to heaven. I won't say any more. There is more. I'm not going to share it with you because what? <laughs> what amazing. I love that. Word. How, how do wonderful people and authors come up with concepts like this? Somebody comes to the courts, explains their transgressions, their sins, what they've done wrong. Food is prepared to represent their sins before they die. The court basically condemns them to death. They die and then they can go to heaven. But then this poor woman who is also imprisoned has to eat all this food that represents their sin in 16th century England, basically. Love it. I hope the writing style does not disappoint me because that plot sounds incredible. So that is The Sin Eater. 
uh, these wonderful books, friends. I can't, I can't express. Next is a book you all might be very familiar with. Um, I know I am, and that is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This has been everywhere. Um, I was very, very reluctant to read it, but it was in the bargain section. It was $5. I thought, why not? There must be a reason why so many people recommend this book and talk highly of it. Honestly, the plot of this book makes me so uncomfortable. Um, very nervous about it because it does follow a young woman who realizes in retrospect that she, I'm not 100% sure whether it was uh, sexual assault or coercion or a kind of forced relationship, very predator-like by an older man um, who I believe was her teacher. Yeah, her magnetic and manipulative teacher. So basically the story bounces between the year 2000 when these things occurred and 2017 when she kind of brings them to light. Um, so I've heard that it is very disturbing. Um, I've heard that's very common for people to read this and then feel like they have to put it down because it's just so uncomfortable. Not a book that honestly I can say I'm excited to read. I'm really not, but I feel like it's something that I would gain a lot from reading. Um, I'd be able to add a lot more to conversations, find my own voice and opinion in this book. Yeah, reading about sexual assault and especially predatory um, kind of pedophilia like really unsettles me and makes me incredibly uncomfortable even in literature. We shall see. Um, I'm not like yearning to read this anytime soon but I thought you know it was such a great deal at my local bookstore and I'm really grateful that um, I had the opportunity and access to this book so I decided to pick it up and we shall see what I think of it. So there's that one. We are nearing this pile and friends, the next book, the last one that I found at my local grocery store, I can't believe it was at a grocery store of all places, um, is Vita Nostra by Marina and Sergei Diachenko. This, again, stunning cover, stunning artwork. I have heard of this book before, but I cannot place where the frick I heard it from. Was it another booktuber? Has it just been floating around? I honestly don't know, but this is translated from Russian by Julia Mitov Hersey. So this is like a dark academia, sounds very intellectual, very fever dream, very confusing kind of book that follows this young girl who very oddly finds herself at this very elite school called the Institute of Special Technologies. Um, she does not want to go to this school and it's in an unknown town and basically everyone who's at this university or institute They don't want to be there either and they also don't understand what their objective is like why are they there? Which sounds very much like Catherine House to me, which I loved. I loved Catherine House so much specifically for how vague and surreal and in one character's brain we were and I feel like this is going to be kind of the same energy and vibe that we're getting like similar to Catherine House. So I'm I'm beyond intrigued. I'm so excited for this one. I just love Russian literature as well that's been translated into English. I haven't read many, but what I have, like I just, I love. It's very dark, very creative and weird and I love it. So I'm just very excited for this one. A little dark academia, a little confusion, fever dream, surrealism. Who knows, maybe there's some magical realism or speculative fiction here. Honestly, I have no idea what to expect and I can't, think for the life of me where I've heard this book from. So, Vita Nostra. And lastly, friends, let's end on a very high note, but I hope this video has been a high note all the way through and through for you, but this I found yesterday at Five Below. They do have some books there. Everything there is $5 or less if you are not familiar with Five Below, if you don't have any near you. And I can't believe I found this. This was on like a bottom shelf and I audibly screamed in the middle of the store. Oh, it's so cute. Are you ready? This is so cute. It's called Cheese Sweet Home by Konami Kanata. This is the freaking cutest little manga. Definitely like middle grade or YA manga about a cat named Chi. Oh god, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't handle it. So yeah, it's all about this cat named Chi, who is a mischievous newborn American shorthair, who, while on a leisurely stroll with her family, found herself lost. When we found Chi, it was clear to us she was completely distraught as she longed for the warmth and protection of her mother. Feeling sympathy for the little furball, we quietly whisked her away, inviting her into our small apartment home, where pets are strictly not permitted. 
While we dread parting with her, there is no way she can stay. Sounds like it's going to break my heart and be super adorable and sappy and wonderful and just cute goodness. So it is volume one. I have never heard of this series, but uh, we shall see. I feel like it's just going to be really, really light and fluffy again. <laughs> I can't believe that they had a manga at five below. What the hell? Um, yeah, so I'm very, very excited to read this one. Um... <laughs> Well, I tried to gather them all. Um, it didn't quite work. <laughs> oh my god. Ugh. Oh boy. So, there we have it, friends. These are the, like, 22... Oh my gosh, that is so... What is happening? Setting down now. Yeah. Those are the, like, 22 books that I just showed you and that I hauled recently. I'm so happy and excited for every single one of these. I feel like they are kind of like my perfect book, so I really hope that the reading experience goes really well with them. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. I obviously have a lot of reading to do so I can get to every single one of these, but I really hope you... Winston is back to say goodbye. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I would love to hear if either any of these make you feel excited to read or you'd be interested in picking them up. I would love to hear which one sparked your interest. Two, if you've read any of them, if you enjoyed them, please no spoilers. And three, let me know if there are any books that you have found recently, maybe while thrifting or places that you didn't anticipate finding a really wonderful book. I feel like every single one of these took me by such surprise and I'm just so happy and so excited. Thank you all so incredibly much, friends. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me and talking about wonderful literature and books. I really hope you had a wonderful time and I will see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye!